Hey there, and welcome to uh, this tutorial video of how to make conservation credits in Planet Zoo. So, often there's a lot of questions floating around on forums like the Planet Zoo ones and um, the Reddit, um, just asking how do you make a lot of conservation credits. And to be honest, um, I thought I'd do a quick video showing you how I make conservation credits. Um, this is my big cat park. So, um, this is Tiger King Park, uh, just because the enclosures that I've made sort of look a little bit like the enclosures on Tiger King, um, uh, the Netflix documentary. Um, but yeah, so the way I do it basically is I have, um, I breed mainly big cats. Um, you can pick up like the quite cheap frontier ones um, for cash rather than conservation credits, so you're not using any conservation credits. And I just sort of built like a little park. Um, it's not a massive park. But it's mainly just for big cats. So um, we have two enclosures. We have one lion here. Um, and these are the brown lions. And then we have the white lions over here. Um, I'm only doing this because you get more conservation credits for the white lions because uh, of their unique coat colouring. So um, yeah, so the way I do it is basically we have a male that gets swapped in sort of every every time his cubs start growing up. Um, so this is Chuma and he has got all these mates and there's currently 15 lions, adult lions in total in this enclosure. So we have the male and then 14 females. So each female will produce about two cubs um, on average. Um, once you've researched the lion fully in the, uh, um, the veterinary center. Um, so, yeah, basically, we're looking at every time these lions breed, we're going to be getting 30 more lions added to the population, effectively, if we let them all grow up and stay here, which we don't, we sell some of them off. Um, so the biggest way, really, is with the lions in particular, is actually not to sell them on the market, but to sell them for conservation credits. So, um, and it's the same, really, for the, the tigers as well. So for a good rated lion... Um, where you've got the, the rating at like over 9,000, you can be expecting somewhere between 900 and 1,000 conservation credits per lion release into the wild. Um, so yeah, so the way I do it basically is I started off with um, four lionesses and one male lion. I let them breed and then I kept all the female cubs but got rid of the male ones. So I released the male ones. Um, you get more money for the male ones being released into the wild anyway, I think. Um, so yes, yeah, so that, that's how I did that. And then you just eventually, you, you get to a point where all these lions that are in here are actually like half sisters. So um, if we have a look at their siblings, so like these are all their siblings. So, um, and even if we look at their parents, the parents have probably even more siblings. I did do a cull recently. Um, I say a cull, basically you just release a load of them into the wild, yeah. So some of them have been the population of the of the older adults has been cut down significantly because um, what happens if you don't do that, your food cost will go up. So if you um, keep like I tend to keep the sweet spot, I think is around 15 because then you're getting 30 cubs um, each time, and um, that way you're you're not going to be going too much into your food costs because uh, these lions are not eating the best quality food because lions are very very expensive to feed, so they're eating basically the worst quality food um but um if you have too many of them if you start getting to about 20 lions your food bills will be extortionate and you'll just start losing money you'll start just hemorrhaging it um so yeah so that's sort of what i do with the lions now um i to make this a little bit easier on myself i do have a naming system in place so if we go on maturity and we go species any West African lion. So yeah, these ones I haven't named yet, but from the ones that I have named, um, so the males, I just pick a, a random like sort of word from nature and put the letter, the, the words main um, at the end of it. And it just means that when it comes up here, as you can see, we've got Bengal, Bengal tiger who's about to mature, but when it comes up here, I can see these are all my female lions here that, um, are sort of reproducing and I can quickly click down and find out any male lions that have matured just based on their names. So I know that if the male lion has, if, if um, one of the lions has the name main after it, 
then I know that that's one of the male lions and he's aged up and it's time to release him into the wild. Um, so then we have um, the tigers. So again, with the tigers, I tend I paired them off. I started off with, I got the best ones I could buy with my conservation credits on the market. And then I um, got a pair and I paired them off. And then their cubs filled more enclosures. So, and then we're a couple of generations in now. And I'm just, so as you'll be able to see, this person's parents are over here. So they're all sort of related to each other, um, except um, I'm trying to keep two different strains going so they can they can um, uh, mate from lions, that, not lions, tigers, <laughs> that I'm reproducing in the zoo. So that's basically how that works. I'm basically just um, breeding Bengal tigers. Again, same sort of thing. Um, I pair them up, ones that I've got, and I see like what their genetics are like compare the mates and work out which are the, the better the better ones to breed with and yeah we go from that so every now and then i'll buy an, a, a tiger from the market just to spice things up a bit improve the genetics um these guys i've, I've researched the full bengal tigers um it's really important you do that because um you can do it literally just while you're waiting for the, t the lions to breed and it will boost the number of animals you get per breeding session so um generally because i've got them researched that they should should be producing somewhere between two and three tigers um i think these guys have only just produced two um but yeah so and i keep them paired up basically for their duration of life if you're getting the ones that are long lived the tigers will be la lasting till they're about 25 so you can have about three three or four um sort of litters from one uh, big cat so and then obviously again you just sell the cubs for conservation credits when you're picking your initial uh, tigers you're going for ones that have got the best genetics so um and the best the, the higher the ranking like the highest gold ranking you can find um for the cheapest price so um again same for the siberian tigers really it works pretty much the same way you're just um breeding them um so that they, they're having lots of cubs and then you can sell the cubs for conservation credits and then this slowly accumulates. I mean, as I said, we're sort of, um, if you're selling if you're selling like lions or tigers for conservation credits and you're selling them for almost a thousand conservation credits each, it'll accumulate really, really quickly. And that's basically it. So um, just a, a couple of things I do wish the game had. I wish the game had a more in-depth market system because I would be more inclined to sell animals on the market then. I mean, I've got like quite high rated um oh they're just merging into each other like i've got quite high rated lions here that have some of them their like cubs are like over nine thousand um on that on the appeal scores so let me have a look <clears throat> so yeah we've got some so yeah these if we go on a base on appeal yeah so we've got nine thousand 825 now which are these are the highest ones i've ever bred so they'll sell for quite a pretty penny and i want to keep the females for that to breed from because they're really high ranked and then i'll find on the market um once these have started to age up obviously um i don't want them breeding with their father so i'll go on the market and find another high ranked lion um to add to my pride and what i'll do is i might even spend a little bit more usually i aim to spend about a thousand on the new lions going in but i don't want to spend too much more than that because i'll be i'll be working at a loss then um the aim is obviously to make more conservation credits each time so yeah and then i use the conservation credits i go on other franchises and i start building spend the conservation credits and when it's getting low i just come back here and play a few more like an hour of this or so and i'll basically make back what i've lost um so yeah we're doing the ones that i find the most profitable are the bengal tigers the siberian tigers the west african lion is the the most profitable because you can have one male to like 29 females so if they're all reproducing two cubs you're, you're it's going to just be exponential the money but obviously be mindful of the food cost because that's the other thing so yeah we've got bengal tigers siberian tigers we have jaguars in here Oh, that's tigers. Da, 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 da. Yeah, we have our... Jaguars are good too, actually. I wasn't sh quite sure how much profit they would make. They're not very endangered, so you don't get too much conservation credits from them. However, they do produce, like, up to four cubs at a time. Um, 
So if you're producing four cups, then you're selling them all for like 500 odd each, and you're recouping your cost back. So it's, it's they're quite effective really. And again, they live they're quite long lived for jaguars as well. So snow leopards. I've been trying with snow leopards. You, you don't really make a lot of money off the snow leopards. I, I would not really bother with them. And same for the cheetahs really. Um, like yeah, the the you just don't seem to reap as much profit from them as the, the, the lions and the tigers. So yeah, that's sort of it really. Um, I hope that um, you found this useful um, and you can now make lots of conservation credits. Um, I'm sure there's been probably a lot of other videos out there that show you how to do it, but this is how I set my park up. Um, obviously as well, um, when I build all my zoos, I always get the full loan out in franchise mode, um, particularly if I'm doing something like this and I've got a lot of the things researched, like the mechanic research and the vet research done, because I know that the animals that are going to go in here are going to recuperate the money quite quickly. Um, so that is something else I'd do. Um, if you're wondering like how on earth to start this when you've got like very low conservation credits and you've got very low cash, um, take out the full loan, spend your time researching um, while you're working in this zoo because you'll be able to just literally go and buy the animals straight away, whatever you want. And because they're big cats, the guests absolutely love them and they'll come and spend money at the zoo. So yeah, the only, as I said, um, going back to what I said about the market. So I wish there was like a graph for the market so that you could see the price that animals are selling at because it's really difficult when you when you want to go sell something you can't you have to sort of gauge from looking at this but it would be nice if when say on like this screen where you're looking at selling and when you when you go to sell um so if i go to this one and i want to want to sell them it would just be nice to be able to sort of see but we'll have like even if it's not even in game even if you have to go on a browser and look at it just see what the average selling price for an animal of this rating is at the moment um i feel like it would help improve the market um and also help encourage people to actually sell animals on the market um also as well um i feel like as well i mean for, from my perspective i find this this was quite easy to set up um because once you get all the research done um you're making money almost instantly so it would be nice if there was um for example the more endangered the species are on the market the higher the sort of starting price is so the, like if frontier set the, the price up so that the more endangered species like the panda and that are like more difficult to get i feel like that would also sort of um it would just sort of create a bit of scarcity in the markets because I do think it is a bit kind of crazy how you can just pick up a panda and pop it in your zoo and be done with it. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's just my thoughts on the game. Um, I hope this video helps people and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.